Okay guys, welcome back. Central Florida Prepper here. Today I will be doing the revealing of my personal bug out bag. Uh, so definitely stick around and I'll show you what I plan on lugging around. Okay guys, so before we tear into this bag, let me go over some basic things about bug out bags. You go online, you see a lot of bug out bags, they pretty much look identical. And yeah, they do, for the most part. Ways to make fire, shelter, purify water, collect water, security. You know, that's 101 survival stuff, okay? And that's what everybody needs to remember. So when you're looking at bags, you say, well, they're all the same. Uh, some of these survival bags that you see online that you can purchase pre-made, a majority of them has some very low quality equipment in them and they won't last very long outdoors. Now when you build your bag you build it to tailor and design for your specific needs. Alright my bag has been changed out many times over. Before my injury no problem. All right, I, I'm a steel worker. I, I, I'm a welder. I, I hung steel for a living as an iron worker. I worked in the shipyard. I worked as a boiler maker. I've been all over the place. My body condition was very great. I was in great physical shape. My bag at that time was 76 pounds. Yeah, people say, oh, you can't carry that much. Yeah, I could. I was very active. I worked as a welder 12 hours a day toting steel all day long. Yeah, your body can be conditioned. Now, since I've been injured, can I carry that bag the way it was set up? No. Uh -uh. I'm lucky to be able to carry two one-gallon jugs full of water up three flights of stairs. It's not going to happen. Okay, so now I had to tear my bag back down, make it lighter. Now, right now, we're sitting at 54 pounds on my bug-out bag. My wife's bag's a lot lighter. Well, she's a smaller frame woman. She's not as strong as I am. It's just, you know, it's just that simple, okay? Everybody is different individually. This is not a war of the sexes here. That's not what I'm saying. I met a couple women that beat the hell out of men. All right, so there you go. All right, so at 54 pounds, can I carry this bag? Not really. And I'm not about to try to because... Right now, I am on limitations. I am supposed to not carry anything over 20 pounds. In a survival situation, do I think I can carry it? Yeah, it's possible. Am I going to be hurting? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be hurting bad. Now, our bug out plans, we vehicle, we have uh, motorized golf carts that we can charge up with a mobile solar system. We have bicycles. But our main objective is reaching our resupply locations. They're kind of like bug out location, but that's not our final destination. Our closest one is four days away. Now we do have survival drop-offs. I've talked about survival buckets buried. We have several of those in between locations. That way we don't have to carry that much stuff. And if we are robbed or our gear somehow gets lost, stolen, we have a way to resupply from point A to point B. So anyway, guys, I'm not going to keep rambling on this. I know you want to see this bag, so let's go ahead and tear into that. Um, I made promises, and I kept hitting around that we're going to get around to it. So let's go ahead and get to it and um, see what y'all think. This is what uh, Central Florida Prepper is planning on lugging around during shit hits the fan. Okay, guys, just want to show you size comparison right fast. This is... A box of kitchen matches. These are the 300 counts. And that is the bag. I have no idea what brand bag it is. I actually purchased this bag from a pawn shop three years back, right at. I do know that was clipped in and sewn in place. I don't know if that is factory or not but that is the only identifiers I have for this pack. It has multiple pouches. One, two, three, four it's internals. It's got four exterior pouches on the back side. 
Um, so yeah, it, it has plenty of places to put gear. And let's go ahead and open it up and spread out and show you what all we got in here. Okay guys, so this from here over is the unbagging of what we have. Alright, so I'm going to change the camera angle again for y'all and we'll go through everything that came out. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and start from this way, move that way. We do have our shower. Um, like I said, these things are tailored for, these bags are tailored for your own know, personal use. Our first bug out resupply location is four days away. And there are three decently sized water sources along our path. So having a way to shower, it's going to be nice. Uh, sure, it doesn't have to be the solar shower. As a matter of fact, Probably, we'll probably want to just dive in the pond, but here in Central Florida, you got gators, water moccasins, cotton mouse, so yeah, this might be a little bit better for us. Now I'm going to start setting things off screen while I do it. Even though that we do not have cold weather, mostly here in Central Florida, I do pack a thermal, uh, I mean, not a thermal, this is a, um, a flannel, this is insulated flannel. It's actually one of my welding shirts I use because it does get cold here from time to time and just a vest. Okay, next up we have some local maps. Well, the local maps I've got in a hard case. Um, I won't be revealing that. These are maps that we have printed off by um, Google Maps. I've talked about this in the past for our routes in immediate vicinities that way we have a hard copy and know exactly what everything is around us and we have the regular state maps and things like that and county maps um, to and from our location I will not be revealing what's inside the maps it's an old photo album that I gutted and we inserted our printed off papers in that but yeah we try to keep them bagged up waterproof Oh, and just so you know, the reason why I'm not showing the actual printed off maps because there's a lot of lines drawn on there and I don't want people knowing exactly uh, where I'm at or where my bug out location is. Alright, so for food, we've only got... Now, this is just my personal pack. My wife also has a pack. So we've got enough food for actually five days per person in each pack. Um, this is enough food for me for five days. And my wife also carries five five days worth of food. Even though our bug out location, we can easily get there in four days, taking our time. If one of us are injured or something like that, an extra day supply of food is going to be nice to have. Now, our resupply location does carry more food, but this is just for our packs. Yeah, I forgot I even had that. Real Spam and some tuna. Now I do purchase the dollar store Spam and save a lot and the knockoff of Walmart. To me, they taste just fine. Okay, so we also have a basic fire starting kit. I've shown this before. We got stormproof matches, extra lighters, magnesium rod, striker. Uh, just goes in. I like the little belt loop that's on there, but this actually goes inside the pack, so I don't lose it. Okay, we do have flashlight. Now this is just a little cheap headlamp. It does work good. I've actually used these. These are a dollar at Walmart. I use these at work because I work in a lot of dark areas that you can't see your hand in front of your face. These work just fine. There's three little LEDs on there and they work great. And this here is a flashlight my wife picked out. This is actually all metal and it's tactical because it's got some edges on it. Actually, it's a nice little light, no AAA battery. Um, so, yeah, that goes in the pack. 
we don't carry the real large flashlights in our gear just for weight purposes so we use the smaller ones okay so you know spare batteries and as you can see I've also got D batteries and I'll explain why alright these are just to replace because we do carry a battery powered fan I know Central Florida what are you doing man you got battery powered fan with you if you've ever camped overnight here in Central Florida and I did an extended camping trip me and my wife for three months in Leesburg my buddy has five acres of property out there and we got out there and we camped to the first part of summer this was last year it was so freaking hot we actually wound up uh, breaking out our solar things like that to push larger fans no kidding guys uh, the humidity was humidity was ridiculous uh, there was a water source nearby but it was a good 40 to 50 yards of muck that I actually sank down to my knee trying to get to the water um, that's just surrounding the pond that's on his property so actually going to the water source to go take a dip was out of the question um, so yeah having a little way to cool off at night is great now this is not this is just a little personal one it's nothing major this was I think we got this at Walmart a while back okay next up cooking equipment I've already showed I don't think I've ever showed you this is an older one I've had it for a good while now um, it's just the basic Walmart kit got your little pot in there extra saucer this is aluminum uh, got some burn spots there uh, still works just fine I think it was like when I bought it I think it was like five dollars maybe it was a ten dollar item but they're lightweight I like them they heat up real fast so we carry those as far as spoons forks and things like that this is just a basic little spork multi-tool uh, this is also a Walmart item um, is it the best no but for weight and I know it's not going to break inside of my pack like the little plastic spoons do you know what you can actually just pack a regular silverware if you want to a fork and a spoon is not going to take up a lot of room as far as weight so you know that might just be the aspect because you know it's got a blade on it so that makes it tactical. cool actually that's part of the can opener it does have a can opener built onto it alright so I have verified that in the state of Florida and other states too I can carry a crossbow for hunting purposes now I just got these in these were what my buddy gave me that came out and did the demonstration for me for the little crossbow bolts this is for the little mini crossbow but yeah having ways of defending yourself I cannot own a firearm okay so having a way to defend myself is still better than nothing so yeah we do pack that in the bug out bag um, that is my pocket knife that I always carry on me so technically it is part of the bug out bag all right now I have talked about this before in the past this is the little propane tanks with the uh, I call them micro burners this here is actually a Coleman peak um, as you can see I've had some uses out of this one we've got a couple of extra but I like these it doesn't take up much weight they burn really hot that's why I like them they, they cook very fast now yesterday's video when I had a uh, doomsday Davy over he gave me a bug out bag and it came with the Espit grill stove that come you know you got to put the little solid fuel in we have never uh, tried these I mean, I've, I've tried them in the past but we never actually implemented it in our plans this is probably something that we're going to be adding to our bug out bags because having a secondary way of cooking you know, it was nice to have although the foods that we have um, for bug out pretty much as long as you got hot water going in there's not really much cooking going on except for the stew you can eat that cold all right and this is also another addition that I'm going to be getting these individual pouches also um, Doomsday Davey 
he hooked me up with some Gatorade individual patches for electrolytes. I did not have these in our bug out gear so I will be purchasing and adding a bunch of these because down here guys it's so humid. I am sweating right now. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just sitting in the shed talking to you. Okay. So we'll be getting those. Alright so we also have I didn't show the gas mask before. I have one. My wife has one. Uh, we have two in the vehicle at all times, so we actually we have a dish, we have four total gas masks. Um, we have a total of 16 cartridges. I only have one in this because it all it fits in this. And to be honest, that should be about all I need. On average, from my research I've done, depends on what you are facing as far as chemical, biological, etc. Uh, it looks like it's about a hundred minute run time on those filters. So, 100 minutes, you know, it's under two hours to get the hell out of the, wherever you're at. You know, 100, two hours is uh, 120 minutes. So, there you go. Rope. I like having a thick, thicker rope. This is actually Harbor Freight. I think it's rated at 500 pounds. I've never broke it using it, but I'm not 500 pounds. So, anyway, we'll keep rope. This is a very light sleeping bag. It's a very lightweight sleeping bag. Like I said, it is so freaking hot here. Odds are I'll be using this thing for a pillow other than sleeping as a sleeping bag. But we do carry lightweight bags. Now, if we go to Wyoming, yes, we will be having some serious bags. Um, and shelter, we just use a tarp. Now, I do like having the small putt tent that is in my wife's bag because of the mosquitoes here. All right, The creepy crawlies, the snakes, things like that. You don't want that stuff getting up in your camp. But in my bag, I carry a tarp. Um, I do not have the camouflage tarp with me. That is also in her bag. Now, I do like the camouflage tarp. This blue, if, you know, we're traveling together. Odds are this is, this is going to go on the ground. But either way, it's uh, to keep, you, keep the water off of you. Speaking of mosquitoes, yes, I've talked about these. These mosquito coils are amazing. When I first found them, they were on clearance for 25 cents. I was 14 years old in North Carolina, so these things have been around for a long time, and I use these. I've been using them since I was a kid. These things are amazing. You fire it up, the smoke that comes off of them, I walk right through them. Uh, I walk right through the smoke, get it on me, but yeah, it does clear out your campsite. They're good for about like a 10-foot radius, so that's pretty nice. Uh, of course, duct tape. In this case, Gorilla Tape. This is a small roll. My big, the big rolls of Gorilla Tape are, you know, freaking up there. So, just to save room, that's enough for what I need for repairs. Uh, compass. Now, Doomsday David did hook me up with a compass. Very much, if not exactly like this. I knew I had one of these. I, I thought I had gotten rid of it, but it turns out I do have another one just like this. So, that was in my bag. That's why I couldn't find it. All right, comms. We have a total of four of these. Two are in Faraday cages. One is in my pack. One is in my wife's pack. This is communication between me and her. Now I recently packed this up. Oh, two months ago, and my and my gear comes a little earpiece headset. And I usually store the battery in a separate bag. There's the bags, and the radio in a separate bags. And we just unscrew the antenna when we got it in storage. But yes, it does still hold charge. One. Because we're not using it and we do separate it so it doesn't get any type of corrosion or anything into the radio. Now, I do not have the charging platform in our bags. Now, we have charging platforms here in our Faraday cage. And we have charging platforms at our bug out location. Which also has solar ability to recharge our walkie talkies if need be which if we're traveling together we should be good but you never know you might get separated now we have gotten two mile range out of this thing with me and her we're right at two miles so hey, it's not bad and this was also purchased on a uh, walmart okay next up we have open that up we do have a small medical kit and yes i do keep the radiation tablets in there uh the iodized salt for uh, blocking the radiation from your thyroids to uh, absorb it. It's just, you know, they're not much like $10 a pouch. 
so yes we do keep it and I do have a small surgical kit in here too you know accidents happen especially out in the woods I've been in the woods most of my life but they do happen but yeah I do keep things in little pouches it just helps keep organizing them in my bag this is also I believe a fishing set yeah I do have fishing gear in here I do fish I love fishing I've done a lot of hand fishing in my youth and you know it's, it's not that hard if you do it or not uh, so no we don't carry a big reels and all that stuff uh, when I was traveling as a train rider and I had um, went into Mexico uh, through Del Rio there before I started riding trains I was walking the Rio Grande and I saw kids with a soda can and fishing string tied to it and they were using that for the reel you know what it worked great for them and you know what it actually does work very good all right so in here we do have some this is just a set of wire set I make snares out of these all right these things are very strong they're very durable you can actually move them around really good um, I make snares out of these uh, this is actually the Dollar Tree works works awesome I do carry nails I mean nails what can I say they've got great applications for just about anything you'd be surprised when you were out there in the woods trying to make a shelter or something and damn I wish I had some nails stone sharp stone I do keep a razor blade utility knife of course razor knives are always sharp they're durable I like them they're not expensive and we also have our saw these saws are great I think I paid nine dollars for this one uh, this is the Ozark trail I've not had any problems with it this is a newer model than the last one I had the way that the locks is sometimes you can lock it past I don't like that because I don't like a blade moving but as long as it's locked in place you're good to go and it locks back in place all right so I spoke about having a short nail puller crowbar yes it's camoed um, <laughs> it's because I did that these I've used these for many years as train rider getting out of weather things like that um, no I'm not telling anybody to go break into anything but when shit hits the fan and you've got to get through something having a crowbar is nice now I do have a very large crowbar with my welding equipment but this thing weighs a lot it's a sleever bar and I use it as an iron worker actually it hangs off my side but I'm not going to be running through the woods with it it's just too freaking heavy but now this is heavy this is carbon pipe okay yes it's camoed and yes like I said I can't carry a firearm I can carry a lot of other things and that does go in the in the pack uh, we do have optics so being able to see down down range is nice to have uh, I believe this is rope I'm pretty sure this is rope yeah we got more rope more cord cordage um, yeah I, I get these little pouches and things like this instead of throwing them out this actually went to my tripod when I purchased for the for the uh, YouTube channel here and it's supposed to be able to carry it around and stuff like that well I'm not planning on carrying around a tripod but the case keeps things organized I'm going to add more stuff to it if I want to we do carry candles I always carry candles I mean why not it's, it's way too fire alright and we have a small tape black tape duct tape uh, 20 ounce soda bottle and I also have a much larger bottle empty <laughs> vodka bottle <laughs> since you're a drunk no these plastics are really thick all right it's hard to bust these that's why they make them out of plastic because you know drunks stumble around everywhere this is to store water in when we're in between sites okay my wife also has them in her gear too so we can fill them up um, mainly because we use the Sawyer minis all right we keep these packs in our bags so many screws right on top of this thing here I believe I've shown that before but we'll go through it one more quick time since I am currently holding you hostage here on my channel all right guys 
it so once you fill it up it screws right on top okay you are good to go all right next up bug spray now bug spray is a great thing um back in the shipyard we used to get skin so soft all right the sand gnats no seams mosquitoes would eat you alive the skin so soft bug spray is freaking amazing now i have been deep in the carolinas and also louisiana and let's face it the pterodactyls and stuff that are out there big ass mosquitoes last resort deet deet it's real bad chemical but i do know things leave you alone with this so if that should tell you something it's probably not good for you all right and of course we keep one pen one pencil one marker i thought i had a notepad in my bug out bag it looks like i do not um and yes we keep the no seam head net um head nets i keep two in my pack these things are great but if you ever tear one mosquitoes will find their way in so i keep a backup in our bags um having an extra one you know you can't carry a lot of backups in your bug out bags so you're you're um stuck with weight well some things you just have to do and of course p38 this is always hanging on a little clip inside my bug out bag great can opener electrical tape and to be honest, I think this might just be another... Yeah, there it is. He's got the survival tin. Oh, what a piece of crap. Um, actually, it's, it's for organization is why it's in this tin. I'm not sure what's in here, actually. Oh, I have a sewing kit. All right, that's what that is. For some reason, I was thinking there was a fishing kit in there. I think I may have had one years ago in a fishing kit. So, yeah, sewing kit. And just electrical tape on it. And we can stitch up stuff when you need to. Okay. okay, guys, last but not least, we do carry a machete. Um, that actually gets strapped on the outside of the pack. So, yeah, having a wave, because let's face it, guys, the Florida landscape is not always sunny beaches. The foliage here is so thick at times, you're pushing against vines, pushing against palmetto trees coming up, fawns, uh, thorns. Oh God, the thorns down here. And it'd be like a wall. So yeah, having a way to chop through that makes a difference. All right, guys. So that is my personal bug out bag. Um, I know I had made promises and hinted around about I would be revealing the bag and I had to do some modification because certain needs had changed. Um, I can tell you currently I can't carry that bag. Okay, I, I would have to one sling it and physically I am not able to. So yes, is it going to have to be scaled down again? It is. Once I am better sure no problem at all I actually I probably wind up adding more weight to it more than likely I'll be adding more uh, bottles things like that that I can store water in uh, because I've said this in the past finding water is not as easy as it sounds okay and I'm not just talking about finding drinkable water I'm talking about just finding water all right now here in Florida yeah it rains I mean we had a bad rainstorm a little while ago and it's humid I mean it's so freaking hot right now so there's retention ponds everywhere but most of these retention ponds contain chemicals antifreeze oil brake fluid all kind of stuff that has been washed off the roads and collected there and we did have a discussion on this before a Sawyer mini filter a life straw is not going to filter that out now so far with my research that i have done about the only safe way i have found to remove chemicals from drinking water is to distill it and that is another project i am still working on um, now they do have distiller machines 
um, one of our subscribers here had mentioned it and I did look it up it's about sixty dollars um, I just have to double check the power ratings of how much wattage it uses so I can kind of tell if my solar can handle it or not but I'm not going to be lugging around a distiller through um, a shit hit the fan scenario now would I be interested in putting that in my bug out location oh yeah definitely definitely um, but as of right now this is just for my needs as an individual with this bug out bag now my wife's bag is mocked up completely different than mine now there are similarities with fire water security um, but mine is different than hers all right her, her back her bag is not as large as mine hers is more streamlined but that's because she is a smaller frame woman she she's not able to carry the weight I usually can carry as of right now I think my wife can carry more than me so what does that tell you all right uh, so anyway guys that is the bug out bag I want to give special thanks to Doomsday Davey for coming out here and visiting with me yesterday um, there are a couple other subscribers right here on this channel that I have been speaking to I mean early on when I first started my channel and we do communicate by text emails things like that um, they live pretty close to me and these are people that I have been mulling over and thinking about building a prepper um, community on a personal level with that because they live right here so don't be surprised if you start seeing more guests that are here some has a uh, YouTube channel others don't okay most people don't like having a um, YouTube channel and some of these some of these uh, guests they don't want to be on film and that is their right and I fully understand okay I mean they either work in a certain position they want to be seen they want to keep it low-key completely understand so uh, just be ready you you'll be surprised if, um, don't be surprised if you start seeing I have other guests here in the bunker now if you'll excuse me I'm gonna go fill that bag back up yeah all right, guys, you take care, and I'll talk to you all later.